Today we're going to talk about how to paint shiny things and I'm going to use two of these Christmas ornaments in order to do it. So stay tuned and let's get started. One of the first things you have to do when you're painting something shiny is kind of in your brain say, um, <laughs> how can I say this? Forget, for, forget that it's shiny. <laughs> That's not the point. The point and the point, the point now and the point always is finding value shapes. And if you find the value shapes, then uh, those relationships will end up exposing at the end of your painting that you have a round, shiny thing. So what I've learned over the years, for me, the first thing that I do, not all the time, but in this case in particular, is to find uh, the darkest dark spots. And that's what I'm doing right here. So I've identified them with some ultramarine blue and a little bit of alizarin crimson. I'm using limited strokes because that's my preference and trying to keep things simple. All right, so that's almost, uh, that's, uh, there's a little bit more to do, but I don't want to overdo it at this stage. This is just what you would call um, mapping in, in a way, so that I know where I want to go, kind of laying the groundwork, so to speak. Now, the Christmas balls are silver and gold, and of course there is no silver paint and there is no gold paint. So I'm going to have to come up with something that looks like those, that looks like those colors. Um, obviously with the gold one, I'm going to be using some yellow mixes. And with the silver one, I tend to go toward neutrals and grays. And I'm going to be using a triad of cerulean blue, um, what is this, cerulean blue, uh, permanent rose, and Naples yellow. But that's later. Now I'm getting into the midtones, and I'm calling this blue shape a midtone. Now, probably through the value finder, it probably isn't. Probably this blue is really a dark. It's probably as dark as the darks I already put in, but I'll adjust for that later. But what I really want to do is make sure that I have some robust color going on. And if I thin that this uh, cerulean blue and ultramarine mixture up too, uh, too much with uh, with water, it's going to look really washed out. And I don't, I don't want to do that yet. Because I know when it comes to the white spots or some of those lighter grays that I'm going to have to be um, really light on my washes and use neutrals anyway. So um, so let's see what happens here. Because I don't remember, I never remember what I just did. And maybe that happens to you too when you're painting. You know, you just get in this other side of your brain. I'm sure that I get into this other side of my brain that is just about shape. And, um, you know, so the house could be burning down and I, I wouldn't even know it. <laughs> um, so here are, here are some grays going in. Now the grays, I'm going to mix the grays from um, cerulean blue, alizarin crimson, and probably a little bit of Naples yellow too. And that's because I've already used cerulean blue. I've already used alizarin crimson. And um, so that there's some consistency. I want to start building my painting from here, always using colors that I've already used in order to make my neutral mixes. Otherwise, things end up looking a little bit like um, puzzle pieces in a way, and they don't, they don't necessarily go together. Now, this is what we've talked about before when we talk about being a matchy-matchy painter. I'm not matching the colors to the photograph. As a matter of fact, in my head, I'm telling myself, don't match the colors to the photograph because that will end up in a fairly unsuccessful painting. I have to come up with different colors that will, um, that in their relationship to each other will be the same as what's in the photograph, but I'm not matching the actual colors. I hope that explains that pretty well. Because if you match colors to a photograph, well, first of all, photographs always are darker than the colors are in real life. I shouldn't say always, but lots of times. And so, uh, what I had in the, in the past was a lot of harshness in my paintings because I was determined to match uh, match the, um, the colors that I mixed exactly to the colors in the photograph. And the result of that was I ended up looking like I had different pieces. I had the right colors and the right shapes, but they looked as if they had been cut out and pasted onto the, um, onto the paper. And you might see some paintings like this if you look around the internet. Um, because that is how some people work. It's how some people prefer to work. And, and that's fine. I'm not, I'm not judging anybody else. 
But for me, I wanted um, this feeling of continuity and, and a little bit of spon spontaneity. Oh, I said that word. Yay. <laughs> That's a hard word to say. So I'm working here. These are still bid tones. I'm staying, um, and I've talked before about how I don't use any um, white out or masking fluid at all, because um, not because I'm against it, but because um, for me, it always leaves a harsh line behind that I can't get rid of later. And so I prefer to um, to keep in my mind those places that I'm going to leave white. Because you know my sign off is leave the white to your paper white. And so that's what I do. I don't use, I very, very seldom use um, any kind of masking fluid. And if I need to put a highlight in, like a cat's whiskers or um, a spot in someone's eye, for example, I, I will use some white gouache to do that. But you have to be careful because some watercolor societies uh, frown on that and won't let you enter your painting in their competition if, if you use any gouache at all. But, um, but my goal is not to enter competitions. My goal is to, uh, to enjoy life <laughs> and get lost in this world of shapes because this is my happy place. And thank you for joining me in my happy place. So you can see there are neutrals going in here, but these are neutrals which have quite a bit of um, yellow in them. Now, now we talked before about neutrals, and, and one of the sure ways to get some really nice neutrals is to mix the three primaries together. So if you're already using a cerulean blue, an alizarin crimson, and a naples yellow, or even in, uh, cadmium yellow, which I'm used in this painting, go ahead and mix them together, and you will end up with some fantastic grays and browns that will be harmonious with the colors that you're already choosing. So that's what I always do in terms of finding my um, neutrals. I, I've never used a neutral from a tube. Um, and I think that um, I could go on, on quite, oh, well, I, I, won't, I won't, but um, I'll just go ahead and say that for me, Payne's Gray is not my friend. I had my Payne's Gray stage, and I see some people who use it fantastically. But, um, but for me, it becomes um, a very muddy. Anyway, that's one example of a gray that you can purchase. And I just decided at one point that, um, that for me, I'm not telling anybody else what to do, but for me, that I wanted to um, mix all my neutrals. And, I, and I'm happier with my painting since then. What do they say? You do you? Yeah, everybody's got to make their own decision about this stuff. So underneath those... Uh, ornaments was cerulean blue going in with some Naples yellow and I, it came out a little bit messier than I wanted it to be and that's because I'm using a round brush. N um, for no other reason than um, I've been painting a lot of faces lately and so it was just natural to pick up the, the round brush. Usually I use a flat brush um, when, but lately I've been using the round one and I'm, I'm going to adjust for that little bit of messiness there later. Uh, the messiness doesn't really bother me that much. But, um, but I know, um, I know it will <laughs> later. All right, time for the background. Now the background in the photograph is all light. So I'm going to go ahead and make white by mixing cerulean blue, alizarin crimson, and naples yellow, making a wash of that. I don't rub them because if I rub them together, then they'll end up being a gray. I want them to meet and mingle and, um, so that your eye can look across those different colors. And in the end, it will look like a white. This is the same thing you would do if you were putting clouds in the sky, only you would make those cloud shapes. But you could use the same colors to do that, and it works really effectively. So there's really very little white left in the painting. Even though I'm calling the background white, it's not. I addressed it because the painting would have looked unfinished if I hadn't, and also because the bright spots on the shiny ornaments have to be the whitest of the whites in order for the objects to look shiny. All right, now I'm going to fix that bit of um, what I called messiness. I wanted to look a little bit more like I had some intention behind what I was doing there. Oh, so that's, um, so I went, I took out a number, oh, that's a big, that's probably a number 12 flat. Yeah, number 12 flat. I like those kind of shapes, those kind of angular shapes. That's just something that that my eye likes. And maybe I was also thinking it would juxtapose um, against the uh, the rounder ornaments. I'm not sure. You know, you get in the left-hand side of your brain and you're not necessarily thinking. It becomes intuitive. Just kind of what do I, what do I know from experience and what do I know that I want to do? So, um, so that's one example of how to paint shiny things. Um, 
So go ahead and get out some ornaments or take some off the tree because you can do this too. <laughs> just put one, just put one in a light box. I'll shine a light on it. Or um, sometimes shining a light on it makes things, uh, gives you too many shapes. You might experiment with just putting it on a table with, um, uh, with some natural light from outside and that, that will work even better. And, um, and go ahead, just remember, don't think of what you're doing. Just think about shapes. Don't think about that they're shiny. Don't think about anything. Get in that side of your brain that isn't thinking. So, um, or that isn't thinking linearly anyway. Of course, it's thinking, it's problem solving all the time. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, and ask for value mix for color. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel and tell a friend to join. That would be a great uh, little Christmas present for me. And I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.